Well, thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here and tell you about my story and um, how it um, inspired me to change not only my personal life, but uh, my professional life as well. Many of you have experienced the birth of a child. Uh, the space between the, your experience was probably a lot um, compared to mine. Uh, Zachary was born weighing less than two pounds. I had preeclampsia, so uh, my body uh, started getting sick. I had very high blood pressure and my kidneys started to fail. So to save my life, he had to be born. Uh, having a preemie is not, uh, a preemie is not a version of a small healthy baby. Uh, a preemie has to start by using all the organs that are not fully cooked, they are not fully developed. Um, you know, they are coming from an aquatic environment uh, to gravity. They're bring, you know, um, they have to start using the lungs very, very early uh, and all the organs that are not fully, fully cooked yet. Uh, this picture was, uh, that's my husband's uh, hand. Um, I was too sick to go meet Zachary. Uh, so 11 years ago, I don't know if you remember, but uh, there was the first digital cameras and they were like this big, and it was a one megapixel camera. So that's what we had. Um, the other picture that, oh, so, so when, when a baby's born, uh, usually uh, you get flowers and you, you know, you get congratulations and balloons and all that. When you have a preemie, you get, I'm sorry, or we're praying for you. Um, we usually talk with other moms about, you know, is it, is it appropriate to say congratulations? Uh, when you know that this baby is struggling to survive and is in pain. And my view is, of course, you became a family. There is a baby, um, you know, struggling, but, you know, he's here. Um, so that's, uh, that's my view. So I always, when I meet moms, I always say congratulations. Uh, and if they get offended, then I explain what I mean with that. So this is again uh, Larry, and if you look at your nail, that's how big Zachary's hand was. Um, he was born, like I said, 12, 12, weeks, or 12 weeks early. And for us, um, being in the, in the neonatal intensive care unit, he was born here in Houston, and you know, you expect to be the primary care of this child when you're pregnant. You expect to have the pictures of the big belly and the pictures of, you know, the body parts of the baby when he's born and, you know, having the, sending the beautiful announcements and because I was in the NICU, I had a lot of time and I made handmade um, uh, announcements that Zachary was here and he was 12 weeks early and all my friends and family, you know, not everybody knew that we didn't have Skype and Facebook. So uh, I send the cards and later, several months later, they, tell, they said that they thought that I had gone to get an ultrasound and I found out that he was a boy. And it was like, why is she sending cards when she finds out that it's a boy? And they said, well, maybe that's something they do in Colombia. You know? <laughs> so I, I am Colombian. I was born and raised in Colombia, so. So then we come to the um, the role of the parent in the NICU. You want to be the primary care of the child, but immediately you become a visitor. Um, you have to ask for permission to touch, for permission to come to the NICU. You have to ask for permission to uh, hold, and sometimes that answer is no, you can't. Um, I was there for 12 hours. I used to be uh, a consultant in, in, in project management for the oil and gas business. And uh, I left pretty much, I was working on my own. I had a consulting firm, so I had the uh, blessing that I could move all my projects and my customers to somebody else to take care of it because I didn't know how long we were gonna be with Zachary in the NICU. So uh, being Colombian and probably being stubborn and engineer. Um, I had finished my PhD five months prior to Zachary's birth. 
I asked a lot of questions, and I was very lucky to be in a hospital that is a, a teaching hospital. So the staff was really open for questions. You know, they actually taught me how to ask questions and uh, related to Zachary. And I asked, you know, what is the common denominator of a baby that is in the NICU when they grow up? And without hesitation, the nurse said, they don't like to be touched. I'm Hispanic. We touch. We don't know the definition of personal space. <laughs> so we hug a lot, we touch a lot, we say hello, goodbye, everything is touching, uh, which I very, you know, I, I, working in engineering construction, which was my first job, um, I had to learn, you know, to, about the personal space. <laughs> and um, just as a side note, when I went to England to work with this company, I asked in England, what is the, pers you know, the perception of Americans? And, and they said, they stand too close. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, <laughs> we're very, very behind. So when the nurse said, you know, what is, you know, they don't like to be touched, I said, well, could it be that every time we touch him, it hurts? And she says, I have no idea. And I had met other parents, um, and, and they said, yeah, it's difficult to hug or to touch a baby that has been for so long in the NICU. So I said, well, let's try it. I'm going to touch him. I'm going to show him that my touch is not going to hurt. I'm going to show him that if I touch him, it's actually probably going to uh, take away the pain uh, that, that he has. And this was because I see kids that are three or two years old in the playground, and they fall. And where do they, you know, they start crying, and where do they go? To the parent. And what does the parent do? You're fine and they go and play again. That is not learned when they start walking. That is learned in the womb. The mom is sense of comfort. And as soon as the baby is born, we need to introduce also the dad as a, sense, you know, as a source of comfort for this child too. So I was there for 10 or 12 hours every day. And there was a very big um, uh, space between what I wanted to do, hold him, touch him, and what I actually could do because I had to go home. I couldn't spend time in the NICU. There was no beds for moms there. So I said, well, I'm an engineer. I have, I have taken so many classes on simulation. So let's see if I can simulate my hand. And I made what eventually I called the Zaki. His name is Zachary, so I called it the Zaki. And this is the way that I would leave him every night. Never crying, very, always very calm. And the nurses saw that it, he was actually doing better than they expected. Um, just by having our presence there. Because I would put it on the chest or behind, you know, sleep with it. My husband would do the same. And, uh, and we just leave it every day. I didn't know this when Zachary was in the NICU, but it shocked me when I saw it. Because when Zachary was in the NICU, they will measure the circumference of the head. And if it grows, then he's, he's good. His brain is doing great. But then when I saw these and realized that it's not the size that matters. It is the way that the brain is being developed, all the network. So one of the examples, they don't like to be touched. That is part of the brain. Memory is part of the brain. Attachment with the parents is part of the brain. All the senses, touch, vision, they grow, they heal only when they are sleeping. There is evidence that this brain of this baby that is born 24 weeks is not going to go like this unless they sleep. 
So sleep is not really, you know, what we want. What is the best way to sleep is on the chest of the parents. And by the way, this is not me. <laughs> so, so, you know, I am Colombian. This is a method that was invented in Colombia in 1978. And I had seen it. I, was, I came in the, to the US in 88, so I have heard this method uh, when I was in my country. And so I held him five to seven hours every day. My husband would come at night and hold him also. And this is called skin to skin, obviously, because that's what we want, you know. If you can't, what we tell the parents is if you can't hold your baby on your womb, then hold him on your chest. The breathing, the natural uh, temperature, the baby regulates um, the breathing, the, the heartbeat, the blood pressure, um, and they, and if they do that, then they can sleep. That is why this is the best um, incubator that you can find, uh, because they not only are saving, you know, the, they're saving their lives but they are developing, they are sleeping, they are, you know, they don't poke them so much. <coughs> so everything was good. We were, you know, I was leaving my, my little Zaki with him at night, we were kangarooing, he was doing perfectly, everything as expected, and then we had a very big event that it was so traumatic that it made it to a movie. This is me. <laughs> That's my husband, um, which uh, in the movie, if you notice, the baby is on swaddling. And I had told them in the interview that I had held my son on skin to skin to save his life because he was too small to generate heat. So my body actually gave him the heat. And they said, well, we had a, uh, we had a uh, medical advisor and they told me that that would never happen. So, if you notice, um, this actor is b uh, giving breaths to the babies. In the neonatal intensive care unit, is the only uh, intensive care unit in the, in, the, in the hospital that doesn't have um, battery, uh, battery power um, backup. So, we had a flood in Houston in 19, in, in, when he was three weeks old that shut down his hospital. I don't know if you remember. Um, and all the life support machines turn off. We kept Zachary alive by hand for nine hours until he was evacuated. And um, I promised Zachary that his pain was not going to be in pain. He was in the hospital for five months. And uh, after he came home, after the five months, they, uh, you know, I started thinking, what can I do to help babies? Because I made a promise, and my promise was, you know, very, very important. So the nurses came uh, about three weeks after I got home, and they said, you know those little gloves that you made for Zachary? Can you make them for the rest of the unit? And I'm like, okay, well, I think I found what I can do. Um, but I didn't like the home version of it. There were a lot of things wrong with it. I'm an engineer, I'm a designer, I'm an ergonomist. I know that this is not the best that I can do. So we spent three and a half years developing a product that will keep the babies close to the parents, the scent, the touch, the weight. Um, it helps the parents leave the baby in the NICU. And we see that with, with, with having that and providing good containment, good boundaries, um, then we have better breathing, we have you know, sleeping much better, and if we sleep, we develop the brain. So this is Zachary in 2002. This is our first like, family picture. He had no oxygen anymore. He was breathing really well. But for preemies, you don't, really don't know what happens until you know, they start growing because you, know, you don't know what happens with the brain. Um, he developed really nicely, obviously, where, you know, when I came home, um, I wanted to make sure that he, I could hug him, hug him really hard, and he started screaming. Then I realized that, you know, uh, if I stop movement, um, 
it will, uh, you know, in the, in the NICU, if you start move, uh, stop movement, something bad was going to happen. So there was that association. Uh, he loves swimming. He's playing golf right now. Um, this is in, our, in, in Houston. Uh, these are his two sisters, uh, Jill and Abby. And uh, he's our company CIO. <laughs> he's our chief inspirational officer. So for us, you know, providing some, you know, um, family intervention is very important. Um, and he's proven to be helping not just the babies, but the parents. We shouldn't see this anymore. We shouldn't see moms crying and the baby on the bed. They should be on the chest of the parent. Um, when, when possible, there are some times that the baby cannot be held and sometimes that the mom cannot come to the NICU. But as, as possible, we don't want them swaddled. We want them on the chest of the parent, safely contained, um, you know, close to the mom and the mom holding hands free. So survival is not enough. We need to nurture the babies and nurturing better comes from uh, from the parents. So by doing these, we close the, sp the space between the quality of life of a preemie and the quality of life of a healthy baby. Thank you.